Welcome to another recycled review where I've got another 15 empties and before I throw them away I'm going to give them a bit of a summary and a score and share with you whether I would replace them or not, just the same as last time. But remember, don't just take my word for this, in the description box below you'll find links to lots of other whiskey tube reviews and reviews out there of some of the whiskies that I'm going to share with you today and then you're not just taking one man's opinion. In the description box you'll also find a link to a spreadsheet and that spreadsheet lists all the whiskies I've ever shared in these recycled reviews with their scores. You'll also find links and if you click that link it takes you exactly to the point in the video where I speak about that specific expression. Anyway, let's get started. Springbank. Now, anything from Springbank, whether it's the Springbank or the Longrow or the Hazelburn, is pretty fantastic. The quality is always very good and the presentation is fantastic as well. Now, the price of this in the UK is about 35 to 30 eight, 40 pounds, something of that order. And you might think that that's a wee bit expensive for a 10 year old, right up until the point that you spend some time with it. This is fantastic whiskey, ridiculously complex for its age, really delicious, really rich, and really stands up to much older whiskies quite easily. I would always love to have a Springbank 10 in the cabinet, and this deserves an eight and a half to maybe even nine out of 10. That's how good this is for a 10 year old whiskey. It's a cracker. <laughs> Two bourbons here. Now they might seem a wee bit similar. This is Buffalo Trace and this is Maker's Mark, but they're not, they're quite different. This is a 20 pounds in the UK and presented at 40%. This is a wee bit more expensive, but not much. You can often get it on offer and this is presented at 45%. This is not a gripe about the amount of whiskey in the bottle, not at all. It's about the difference that that 5% can make in engagement. Where this is quite watery, and light and maybe okay on a sunny day like today to pour over ice or in a cocktail or something like that but not as a sipper whereas this can do all this is really quite rich and tasty and you put this up against anything and it does a good job if you had 20 to 30 pounds to pay on a bourbon i would always reach for this one i'm not in a hurry to replace buffalo trace again but i would certainly have maker's mark back in the cabinet this one gets a strong 8 out of 10 whereas this one just scrapes a seven. Another Deanston, this time a non-age statement from Deanston, but despite the non-age, it's still presented at 46.3%, unchill filtered natural color. This is the Decenary, which is an expensive Deanston at 110 pounds, but it was made to commemorate the distillery and the decades of operation there. Now this was a distillery exclusive and it's sold out now and you're going to struggle to buy it I guess you'll maybe turn it up in auction and if you got it at a decent price it would be definitely worth it because it was a very rich very old school style whiskey much much more kind of fruity and sherry style with a bit of a sulfur lick to it I would say yes if you got this at a decent price it would certainly be worth it lots of people really rave about this I prefer the younger brighter Deanstons from a bourbon cask but I really did enjoy this and I happen to know that despite this being distillery only and being sold out now, that there is a batch two coming this year and I'd be curious to try that one as well. Very good whiskey, eight to eight and a half out of 10, but excited to try the next batch. Now this is an event whiskey. This is a Canadian whiskey, but it's not like any Canadian whiskey that you're used to. I remember trying Canadian whiskies and just thinking that they were a bit light and not really much to them. Um, fantastic as a base for mixing and things, but not much more. Certainly wasn't much sipping engagement there, but this is an absolute cracker of a whiskey. This is Lot 40. This is a 12 year old cask strength. This was given to me by Daniel Whiskey Throttle and I'm very, very grateful for it because I absolutely loved every single sip I had of this and I shared a hell of a lot of this with everybody that I thought would enjoy it and the feedback I got from them was that it was terrific too. It's an absolutely cracking whiskey, very difficult to get a hold of, but this is a type of Canadian whiskey that you just don't associate with the style. It's 100% rye, so not to everybody's palate, but even if you think you don't like Canadian whiskey, even if you think you don't like rye, this would be something to try. This would be something to even track down. It's an absolute cracker of an event whiskey. 
delicious fruit, delicious spice, just spice for days. And it's got the ABV at 55% to really be flexible so you can add water and bring it down and down and down and see how it changes. It's been an absolute pleasure to spend time with this whiskey. I wouldn't get a chance to buy this again, but if I did, if I could pick it up at reasonable money, I would absolutely have lot 40, 12 cast strength back in the cabinet again. Now the one that came after this was an 11 year old um, and I hear that the one that's coming out a bit later this year is going to move to non-age statement um, but still I think it's going to be something that I'm going to look forward to trying in the future. This is an easy 9 out of 10 whisky and I recommend everybody to try and grab it if they can. <laughs> Glen Grant 18 year old. Now this was awarded Jim Murray's uh, Scotch Whiskey of the Year 2018. Now I don't know if I agree with that, you know, but it is a decent whiskey. It's quite elegant. It's got lots going on and it's a very, very typical, nice, balanced Speyside style. There's a wee bit left in this actually, just remind myself. It is very good. Unfortunately, it's just a wee bit light at 43%. I would just like it to have just that wee bit more grip, that wee bit more bite. Nonetheless, this is bottled at 43% for its market, for its intended market, and it does a very good job. And I would probably give it an eight and a half out of 10, but at the same time admit that I'm probably not in a hurry to replace this one again. Still, it's decent stuff. <laughs> Amrut Fusion, Indian whiskey. This is a curious one, this is when they take Indian barley, but they also mix it with some imported, peated Scottish barley, and that's where they get the name Fusion. Now it's bottled at 50% ABV, which I think is, is, is one of the best things they did with this, because it just brings that extra power and weight, just gives it that extra bit of flexibility as well. I really enjoyed this, but I have to admit that the first few drams down to the shoulder, the neck pour and beyond, was just a wee bit chemically it was almost like a paint type flavor from it but that dissipated quite quickly and as the bottle went down this changed and i enjoyed this a lot and i enjoyed sharing it with people who were surprised just how good world whiskey and especially indian whiskey could be it's not that expensive or it wasn't when i bought this and it is one to look out for and try and see how you got on with it it's not really super peated it's lightly peated i would say but it's very engaging and i would say it was an enjoyable whiskey i would give this an 8 out of 10 and while i might not replace the fusion again i'm on the lookout for another decent experience with amrut <laughs> always have a, a whinge about ABV, don't I? However, there are some whiskies out there at 40% ABV that are just fine. Some of them even good. And this is a good example of that. This is Green Spot, single pot still Irish whiskey. It's really one of my favourite whiskies. I love the texture of this whisky. And I love it so much that I don't mind that it is a wee bit two dimensional. It's not the most complex of spirits. It's, it is bottled at 40% ABV. But when you're in the mood for that nice, clean, smooth, dare I say, lovely textured palette. This is a, just a lovely, classy whiskey. I would suggest that I'm gonna go out and replace this immediately again. I love this stuff so. I would give Green Spot probably a strong eight. Mm, you'd maybe on a good day push me to go to eight and a half for this. I really do enjoy the stuff. And I would recommend that you seek out all single pot style Irish expressions, but this one's pretty damn good place to start. Really decent stuff. Glen Cadam, 15. Now this was Ralphie's Whiskey of the Year in 2017. And it was originally really good value for a 15 year old, but after Ralphie gave it his Whiskey of the Year 2017, it quickly sold out and it never really caught up again. And I'm pretty sure that the 15 year old is now discontinued. However, there is still some out there in the supply chain. You can happen across it. And I think it is a decent example of a 15 year old light bourbon matured Highlander. Really decent stuff. However, I don't think it's a beginner's whiskey. There's not an obvious hook in this. And I think that it's only when you compare it to perhaps other 15 year olds that it starts to show what it has on offer. I would probably like to have this back in the cabinet again, but I'm not in a hurry to seek it out. I would probably look for other Glen Cadams to see what the other age statements have to offer as well. But I enjoyed my time with this and I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10. Oh, 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 oh. 
This is Nika from The Barrel. Now this is a 50cl bottle and it's offered out there at 51.4% but this is a Japanese blended whiskey. And being Japanese blended whiskey, we're not even sure what's inside this. We don't even know if it's actually Japanese. But nevertheless, given how expensive Japanese whiskey is to buy right now, this is kind of decent to have in the cabinet. It's not that expensive. And it gives you something to let people try. Now, I would suggest that this is a wee bit closer to bourbon in style, actually, than typical Japanese whiskey. It's very oaky but it was decent and at 51.4% ABV, it gives you a wee bit more flexibility to kind of play with it a bit more. It was decent, I'm not in a hurry to replace it again. I think I enjoyed my time with it, but I would say this is a seven and a half out of 10 and I'm not gonna replace it, but it wouldn't stop me recommending it to other folk who I think might enjoy it. Not bad. Oh Old Pulteney, 12 year old. Now I'm quite surprised to say that I haven't reviewed Old Pulteney 12 on the channel before because I do get through quite a bit of it. Now everybody was nervous when we went through the repackaging and rebranding and worried what was going to happen to the whisky. But I have to say that the 12 year old seems to have stayed damn solid. This is always great value in the UK. It's about £25, which is fantastic value for a 12 year old whisky. Now it is bottled at 40% ABV, but it does okay on that. It's still engaging and enjoyable even at that low ABV. And at that price, who can grumble, right? I'd have to say I'm relieved because the, the older age statement stuff jumped in price a wee bit too high for my liking. And the 12 year old for it to stay at that price and level and to stay at this quality is really encouraging. I will replace Old Pulteney 12 and I'm glad that it's still available at that price and that quality. It's a good one. Seven and a half out of 10. <laughs> Wolfburn. This is a peated whiskey from Wolfburn. And I've had this a little while and I probably took a wee bit too long getting through this because I know a lot of people were raving about it and quite enjoyed it. But I struggled a wee bit with it, despite it being very good in terms of uh, its flavor and engagement and things, especially for a three-year-old whiskey. I felt that it just lacked a bit in the finish, probably because it is quite young. Not bad and encouraging for Wolfburn, and I'm excited to try more from them in the future, especially as they get some maturity to the product as well. I would give this a 7 out of 10, and it scores there just purely because of that finish. It was just a wee bit short, dry, a bit ashen, and a little bit too bitter for my liking. Again, just because of how young it was. Nevertheless, I have tried other things from Wolfburn that were better, and I'm excited to find more things from them in the future. This particular one I'm not in a hurry to replace again, but I would give it a strong seven out of 10. Singleton, now this is a non-age statement, Singleton, this is the Spay Cascade. And normally you'd find Singletons out there as 12 year old. You find Singleton of Glendullen, Singleton of Dufton, and Singleton of Glenord. So, Two Speysiders and Glen Ord from the Highlands. And the reason that Diageo do this is because, you know, Swingleton is their kind of Glenfiddich 12 or their Glenlivet 12. And they spread it over three distilleries so they can cover the demand in all the markets. And the flavour profile between the three are, is kind of very, very similar. And it's decent whisky. However, what I would say, much in the same way as Glenfiddich 12 and Glenlivet 12, is aimed at a very certain market. 40% very easy to sip. That's exactly what this is. It doesn't make it a bad whisky. It just means that it's probably one of those whiskies that you would just use to start off your journey or start off your flight or something like that. I would also say that the non-age statement stuff has not been as engaging to my palate and in my opinion. And if I was going to have a singleton from any of the three distilleries, it would be the 12 year old version and I would dodge the non-age statement stuff. This was a six and a half out of 10 for me. It took me a long time to get through this, but the 12 year old singletons, I would give seven and a half to eight out of 10. And I would suggest if you're going to try singletons, it probably is the 12 year old age statements that you want to go for. Not bad, not great. This, however, is great. This is a gift from the Scotch Test Dummies and this is Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. This is the 69.7% ABV version and it was an utterly fantastic bourbon whiskey. In fact, there's a wee drop left of this as well. I have truly enjoyed every single drop of this. It's 
is so rich. It's bizarrely easy to sip though it's 69.7% ABV. This is the whiskey that redefined my opinion on bourbon. This is just such a wonderful, rich product. And yes, there's lots of oak and things. And this is the 12 year age statement version. Really, really fantastic stuff. Now you can get this, it's tricky to get in the UK and we do pay really quite over the odds for it in the UK. But nevertheless, even at the higher prices, you know, 70 and 80 pounds, this is worth it. It really is a terrific whiskey. It's one of those event whiskies. And if you've never tried a Leisure Craig Barrel Proof, try and seek this out. Of course, it's a nine out of 10 and I'd recommend it to anybody who's into whiskey. Oh. And we finish where we started off with a 10 year old Springbank. But this isn't anything like the Springbank that we started with. That was the core expression. And this is a 10 year old local barley, which I think was their 2017 release. This is a terrific whiskey. It's presented at cask strength, 57.3% on this occasion. And really, really terrific stuff. I described this as spiced butter. That was the best way I could describe it. But that's just simplifying it far too much. This is terrific whiskey. Really easy to drink, even at a high ABV. And really, you can just pour this for anybody and you're never going to have anybody say anything other than that is fantastic whiskey. Yes, it got a hard time for being 95 pounds, a bit expensive for a 10 year old whiskey. Whiskey. But we have to remember this is Springbank. It's in limited quantity. It's always exceptional quality and it's cask strength product. And it's a very unique thing being a local barley expression. I've already got the nine year old in there to replace this. I'm not going to find the 10 year old very easily unless I go to an auction. And even the nine year old now is going to be tough to get a hold of. But if you see Springbank local barley out there, don't hesitate. Just go ahead and buy it because it's terrific. And this is another nine out of 10. Thanks for watching another Recycled Review. If you've enjoyed this, there's seven other Recycled Reviews before this that you can catch. And of course, if you enjoy those, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Remember the links in the description box below to other reviews out there, and remember the spreadsheet as well. And until next time, thanks. special treat for those who have stayed to the end of this video. Just the same as the last recycled review, I've managed to save some heels from six of the best bottles that I threw away today. Now all you have to do to be in with a chance of winning these is to like, subscribe and write in the comment section below, heels please. I'll put your name into a spreadsheet and I'll make a draw on a live upcoming VPUB Thursday night live stream and I'll get in touch with the winner directly. Now remember the only caveats are that you need to be in a country that I can legally ship alcohol to you and of course you need to be of legal drinking age. Thanks for staying to the end of the video and until next time, slant you.